What's up guys, it's Crash and Infinity War just revealed even more details coming to DMZ in season two multiplayer. Sorry about it, bud. I don't know what's coming for you in season two. But anyway, even more information about DMZ. And some of these things are really big changes. And I wanted to talk to you guys about it and react to it just a little bit. So I thought the quickest way to get you guys the information efficiently and straightforward would be just to pull up the patch notes and talk about these and react to them. I've highlighted some of the important stuff because the game is really changing. And I'm interested to see where it goes moving forward. So let's get you guys the information and discuss it just a little bit as we go. So the first thing that is a major update that we know is coming is the Sheikah Island. The rebirth map or the resurgence mode map is going to be playable in DMZ. But one of the things I thought was interesting that they talked about here is infiltration is under heavy fog and can impact combat by providing cover for both operators and the occupying force shadow company. So potentially we're getting some weather that could change the effects of gameplay and how that interacts. And it might make a whole set of weapons or a whole set of attachments even more important. And by that, I mean, maybe thermals will be really strong and hard to come by and be worth something and kind of open up a new meta uh, on this map. Maybe the fog's dynamic. Dynamic weather would be really cool and help quite a bit. Um, the things that are going to be added to are kind of expected, a little bit self-explanatory. A new weapons case, a new boss, the bomb maker, so that'll be a lot of fun, and a new locked and dangerous spaces to access and explore. Nothing earth shattering there, kind of what we would expect coming from there. Again, they just gave you a refresher on where you can get building 21 keys to be able to access it right there. Sam sites, chopper crates, buy stations and legendary orange crates. And then as far as what's coming to Al Mazra, uh, lore wise, it looks like there's updated intel indicating including the crash of an unknown aircraft at the Satik cave complex. So we're gonna get into mission updates in just a little bit, but it sounds like adding to the lore of Al Mazra DMZ, there is some new stuff going on at the Satik cave complex. I hope they continue to add stuff to the map, including adding more maps like they're doing so far. Uh, contraband weapons inventories will be rolled back to the starting weapon. So they're talking about what they're wiping. Uh, key inventories are going to be emptied. We do know that insurance slots are not gonna be wiped. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. And faction missions and mission progress will be reset to make room for an updated missions that incorporates all exclusion zones. So I think that is incredibly important. One of the things that has turned me off from games like Tarkov is repeating the same quests over and over. And I've always wanted dynamic quests and missions and to see them that they're uh, going to reset these every season, I think is a really big deal and gonna add quite a bit to replayability when you jump back in after the refresh. I think. I think it cannot be understated how important resetting the faction missions and changing those to new and different things to keep keep the gameplay dynamic and changing, I think is incredibly important. Again, we talked about uh, insured weapon slots and they will not be reset, but they did say they're going to make it just a little bit easier to get those if you didn't unlock them in the first season. Um, they're kind of adjusting missions. Um, all season one missions and boss enemy rewards, for example, previously acquired Almazra weapons case rewards will not be reset with the exception of of contraband and keys again just kind of reinforcing what will be wiped and what won't be uh mission progress for season one got too difficult they said that's a little bit debatable uh with season two making sure each mission challenge and time requirements are more balanced i honestly hope they're still pretty difficult but i would love to see a little bit of an uptick in the rewards a little bit more of a reason for getting getting into the game even farther uh the key stash will now be able to hold specific mission items you must gather from one exclusion zone and bring to another. This allows us to have longer form missions that utilize all of our exclusion zones. So this is really big. So we're starting to see our first changes to the stash. Now, a lot of us have talked about really wanting to see a stash where you can put things in like three plate vests and you can put uh, self revives and maybe gas masks and things like that into a stash and decide to take them in or not would be really cool. But this is the first time that they're going to add a stash where you can hold specific mission items that you have to take in to other um, maps. So it sounds like there's going to be missions that are kind of chained together that take place on different uh, maps. So like a compound mission. I think this is really cool. It's our first uh, change to the stash that we've seen. Uh, Tarkov has something similar like this. If you have a mission specific item, there's a special spot in your inventory where that goes. It sounds like this is coming to DMZ. So I think that's really cool. It's going to add to more complex and uh, intriguing missions, uh, to be honest. Uh, with the new mission set, we can employ multi-locations that send players to Almazra, to Ashika Island, and to Building 21. The mission refresh is made up of new missions, updated missions, and missions we felt worked really well from season one. So again, going more in depth on that update across multiple locations for singular missions, I really like that. Now, this is also pretty big. To complete this reset, DMZ may have to go offline for a few hours ahead of the launch of season two. 
we'll be sharing details and timing on that soon. So they might have to take it offline for a little bit, but uh, not too big of a deal, it doesn't sound like, but it will potentially be going offline. Then one of the things that we needed to talk about just a little bit is I want to get your guys' opinion on this. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 owners will get exclusive access to a new faction called the Crown. This is a British group that is shrouded in mystery, but they have certainly piqued the interest of Black Moose. Again, this faction will be only available to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 owners. So there is a faction and you exclusive to people who bought the main game, who bought the multiplayer. So yeah, I don't know exactly how I feel about that. I guess it's fine to give some some people a little bit of, of a, a reward for purchasing the main game. I just hope there's nothing game changing. I don't think there will be, but there should not be any big gameplay advantages to having this extra faction to be able to do missions for. Uh, I hope it's just kind of extra content that comes along with purchasing the game. That's okay, but if there's special, game altering stat changing stuff that you can only get through going through there that's going to be a pretty big deal so we need to keep our eyes on that as i would guess i'm assuming it's just going to kind of be a little extra reward a little bit of extra content and it shouldn't be necessary to progress through all the main storyline missions that's my hope anyway guys but anyway I just wanted to get through this video really quickly and let you guys know what was going on with uh, DMZ in season two. I thought I would try to get you the information as efficiently as I possibly could. I super appreciate you guys clicking on my video, watching till the end. Consider subscribing and we'll see you later.